Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. B, your Creole Connection, and this morning we're heading down Highway 90 on our way to Jefferson Island, which is located in New Iberia, which is right outside of Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we're going to visit the Rip Van Winkle Gardens and the Jefferson House, located on Jefferson Island. Uh, it's a little different from our usual fair of antebellum homes, but it was built just a few years after the antebellum period in 1870. And I think uh, it has a, a lot of the same type of architecture. Uh, it's not a Greek revival style like we usually see or the Italianate style. But we are going to see what it, what it looks like. But the big draw here is not the house as much as it is the gardens. They, they are uh, well, they have a good reputation. Although I want to, I want to make that judgment for myself because some of the gardens that have these types of reputations tend to not be as vibrant and as exciting and as positive as others. So let's let's go take a look. This is some of the longest, uh, most spectacular Spanish moss I've seen in quite a while. And I'm about to take a tour of the Joseph Jefferson Mansion here on Jefferson Island, which boasts some of the best gardens in the state. Well, I'm here to see if I can confirm that. Joseph Jefferson, a prominent stage actor of his time, was looking for a warm climate haven for his family. So while working in New Orleans, he found out this unique property was available, so he bought it. And adding to the property's mystique, it is believed that the pirate John Lafitte buried some treasure on the island, and over time, that proved to be true. So as I stand here on the front porch waiting for the tour to begin, let me hasten to say that Joseph Jefferson was best known for his portrayal of Washington Irving's fictional character, Rip Van Winkle, hence the name of the gardens. Well, that was video was not allowed inside, so here is a shot of the mansion from about 50 yards away. It has two floors, the bottom floor has about eight rooms and a second floor. And sitting prominently above the second floor is the cupola, a fixture designed to aid in ventilation and to dissipate heat. So here we have a picture of an entrance hallway leading into a dining area. This is a very sought out Victorian mansion for weddings because it recaptures the romance of the late 19th century. And right behind the mansion is uh, what at first glance might appear to be a bomb shelter of some sort, but it's not. It's actually an underground cistern that complements this one and this one on the far side. And of course, sugarcane kettles. Here I am walking along this very foreboding walkway leading up to this gothic grove of oak trees and bamboo shoots. This is quite different from, say, Homer's house, which was airy and bright, almost festive. This garden is darker, more brooding, and much more mysterious. Let's see if we can go and find a shot of the and these servants' quarters are actually now a bed and breakfast. And here I am going down this rather steep decline. Uh, you can easily see the elevation of this property which rises about 55 feet above sea level which is unheard of here in the flat bayou lands of South Louisiana which tend to be as flat as a pancake and from here you can also see Lake, Lake uh, Panur uh, and it should be just beyond this grove of trees and it is you can see the blue waters peeking through the tangle of moss and flowers and winding leaning branches of various types of trees 
So here it is, Lake Panur. This is a nice reward for all the walking. And that's Panur is P-E-I-G-N-E-U-R, which is French. And loosely, I think it means comb, combing. Uh, for a lake, the water seems unnaturally blue. And the bulkhead here consists of this with this rip wrap. Beautiful. Fun fact Jefferson Island is actually not an island at all, but rather a pushed up salt dome that makes the Jefferson property rise above the surrounding South Louisiana Bayou terrain. And not only Jefferson Island, but also nearby Avery Island, Weeks Island, and Cote Blanche. Here we have a whole stew of caladiums in this sugarcane cooking kettle in this rich black Louisiana mud. So President Grover Cleveland uh, spent time under these oaks, and legend has it that he would nap peacefully in the southern breeze beneath these towering sentinels. Also, the French pirate John Lafitte buried treasure here. Small chests of silver and gold coins was discovered during the digging and excavating stage of a project. Some of the coins are on display in the mansion. Now, these paths are wide and covered with gravel, so navigating is easy. No thick, black, muddy soil. No chance to go off path. And this path leads to Jefferson Restaurant, we should see it coming into view in just a few minutes on the other side of this uh, tea house that's coming into view. So here it is, the Japanese tea house. So what's a Japanese tea house, you ask? Well, it's a place for drinking tea and ceremonial gatherings. It's also known as a chas situ in Japanese. Uh, and people gather in this room. Uh, they can have tea together and forget their worries and feel the connection with nature and just enjoy uh, a tea drinking moment. But well, there it is, what's left of it. I'm actually a little surprised as I walk through this, these paths and see all of these oriental shrines and tea houses and bells and gateways. Uh, this place has a decided oriental theme. I was, I'm surprised about that. Uh, and you can see here, I'm not sure what this is. This is garden art at another level. And continuing, uh, we have even this bell here uh, and behind it a gateway of some sort. As I stand here and look at the bell over this well and the gateway behind it, uh, you can see it is also definitely oriental with the lace wrought iron and, and engravings. I'm always a little leery of going through a gateway from one side to another. I don't want to make any dimensional leaps. So we'll just leave that there and continue toward the restaurant. This schoolhouse, regardless of its original use, seems closed. Although I do see a few tropical birds in cages through the window. I'm reminded of a line from one of my favorite poems, Sympathy from which Maya Angelou barred the line, a caged bird. The poem is written by Paul Dunbar, the son of a slave. And the line goes, and the faint perfume from its chalice steals. I know what the caged bird feels. So, making a retaining wall. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I found my uh, restaurant today as a restaurant attached to this mansion with seating inside and out 
I decided to sit next to this beautiful lake with a nice breeze coming in off of it. Well, the meal was just lovely. A club sandwich, I ordered light, with a very fresh house salad and a piece of chocolate cake, all served by a very cheerful, positive staff. I do enjoy making every meal, large or small, or even a snack, a feast for the soul, where each moment is greeted with gratitude. Well, that concludes our visit to the Rip Van Winkle Gardens and the Joseph Jefferson Estate here on Jefferson Island. Since the estate was built in 1870, it is not an antebellum mansion like the ones we are so fond of visiting. This estate has no cash crop like sugar cane, although the owners have made a small fortune selling salt mined from the salt dome that forms this island. There is no river. The history here is rather tame, but nonetheless, the property does have a rich tradition of taking full advantage of Louisiana's climate and the rich Delta soil, and as a result, has produced some of the luscious gardens here in the South. This place, with all that it has to offer, remains one of Louisiana's best kept secrets. If I had to uh, summarize it in a word or a phrase, I would say it's, uh, it's uh, a labor of love. Someone with a horticultural passion took this island and created quite an experience. It's not as ornamental as Homer's house, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Well, this is Dr. B. I am your Creole Connection, heading back to Highway 90 and going south. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.